is right, sent on the strong. I will so be you. Hi, good morning, and welcome, welcome back to our Sunday service. I'm Jeffrey, and you're watching the Penang First TV. Here are this week's highlights. Join us for our weekly online prayer meeting every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Zoom. Corporate prayer needs a group together in a bond of fellowship and praise. We are edified and unified in common faith. As we pray together for our church and country, we build love and concern for others and display our dependence on God.
Well, that's all we have for you this week, but feel free to log into the website for more information. Thank you for watching and have a blessed week. Ciao. A very good morning to every one of you. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Shall we stand and let's declare, I am deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Look at somebody and say, you are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Together, we are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Let's confess the three very important things. Love God, love people, love life. One more time. Love, love God, God, love, love people, people, love, love life. life. Thank you. Praise God. You may be seated. Um, I, there's one verse that I want you to memorize. That is uh, uh, 1 John 4.4. 4. It's a very powerful verse. Together, let's read. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 4.4. 4. One more time. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. One more time. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 4. It's important that you walk in the awareness of what God declare over you. When God sees you, you know, He is saying that greater is He, the one that is inside you, than He that is outside the world. Doesn't matter what we are going through. That is uh, in Psalm 91, verse 5 to verse 6. It says, You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness. What's the meaning of stalk in darkness? That means you do not know. You are not sure which direction it comes from. You know? But the Bible tells us that we will not fear because it doesn't matter which direction it comes from and even if it is stalks in darkness, nor the destructions that weighs at noonday. Hallelujah. I want you to know that fear attracts. Whatever we fear, it will come to pass. Faith reject. Hallelujah. Walk in the awareness that, let's read that verse one more time. Greater is he that is in the world, greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world. Okay, now make it, personalize it. Ready, want to go? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Give the Lord a hand. Now, this morning, I would like to take you to the passage. Um, let's look at this uh, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. Verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And so God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Verse 13. And God said to Noah, to Noah the end of all flesh has come before me, but the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. 16. And you shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower second and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. Verse 18. But I shall establish my covenant with you, and so you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, your son's wife with you, and of every living thing of, of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the earth uh, to keep them alive with you and they shall be made male and female verse 20 
and of the birds of their kind and of animals after their kind and of every creeping things of the earth after its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourselves of all the food that is eaten, that you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did, the Bible says, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. It's very interesting to read the book of Genesis chapter 6 about Noah. And especially about Noah, the Bible says that he's a righteous man. And at the same time, twice on two occasions, God commanded and commanded him and said that, does Noah did according to all that God commanded him? So he did. Now, um, what will happen during this time, which the book of Daniel prophesies about, you know, God is in charge of the different kingdom right until the end time. When, when this, um, when this uh, Daniel was uh, uh, interpreting the vision for Nebuchadnezzar, he was actually referring to the time where he was in because that's the time of King Nebuchadnezzar. He ruled and reigned. But all the way, the huge human figure that he saw, gold, which is of the head, and then silver, which is of the chest, and tie, which is of the bronze, and then iron, which is of the leg, and then the ten toes, which is basically uh, iron and clay, is referring to our time. So can you imagine 12 chapter of Daniel from the time when Daniel interpreted about King Nebuchadnezzar. Eventually, the rest of other kingdom come to pass. And now it is marching fearlessly, forcefully towards the last part. And that has to do with your era and my era. And so with that, what will the world become? And we have read, you know, in the book of Daniel chapter 12, it says that those who believe the names will be written in the book of life. For those who by choice choose not to believe, the Bible says there's a place that is destined for the unbelief, okay? That is called hell, you know, lake of fire. Now, what shall we do as a church from now until then, when eter before eternity is being revealed? Daniel has warned us. He says that such a time will come. But those who are wise, meaning to say, those who have thought it through, they have to make a choice. He says that the one that who is wise will do this one thing. Earn many, as many, push as many, pray, you know, as much you pray. And live your life in such a way that you're able to turn many to righteousness. And they will be like a star, okay, in the universe, shining brightly. Can I have that verse, sir? Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those that lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And time is around the corner. As we experience, 40 years ago, it's like we read about it and we were speculating. But now it's as though like we are living in it. Earthquake, strange sicknesses, incurable, very potent and poisonous, called pestilence. And the most recent name of this pandemic is called coronavirus. All these are happening. And on top of that is called wars and rumors of wars. The Bible talk about. Can I have that scripture verse in Matthew? Wars and rumors of wars. What shall we do? Matthew 24, verse 6 to 8, is a verse that tells us very bluntly concerning we are living in the era of the beginning of sorrows. This is in King James Version. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
For nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and the pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. All this is happening. And the Bible tells us that all these are the beginnings of sorrow. What would the future be? I don't know. But the Bible does tell us that there are things that is lining up for the people of God. That is the event called rapture, parousia in Greek, and then the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what shall we do? Every day we are bombarded with bad news. Every day we get to hear about there are more new cases about coronavirus, both in Malaysia and outside Malaysia. The death toll is climbing. There was this couple from America. If I remember the place where they are from, it's called Charlotte, I think. Uh, there are a couple that visited Malaysia but got stranded. But now they become a, quite a famous local YouTuber. They make full use of their time. Um, and they end up in Cameron Highland. And then they stay in Cameron Highland during that period of lockdown for three months. And they enjoy every bit of it. They say that Malaysia is such a haven. They went into detail by uh, categorizing the housing in Cameron Highland back in America called Charlotte, the place where they are from, you know? Uh, food bill, and then the food bill in America, transport in Cameron Highland, transport in, back in the little uh, township, whatever. And they say that simply it's fantastic, Cameron Highland, and especially Malaysia. They want to come back. But one of the things that they highlighted is Malaysia has done so well in terms of to contain the coronavirus. So we are living in a very protected area, you know, uh, especially Penang. Uh, and so we know the danger of the pandemic, but we are so well looked after by our state government and by our federal government in terms of their policies and all that. But if you were to go into uh, social media, you'll be able to find that some cities in other parts of the world, some nations, you know, and, and, and the casualty is so great. The rolls of this uh, coffin, as well as casket, pile up. It's unimaginable. Back to where we are. What shall we do? We are, you cannot deny the fact that there's no such a thing called end time. You cannot deny the fact that we are living in it. But we cannot be certain that rapture will take place tomorrow. What shall we do? Now, I want you to just park your thought, uh, meanwhile, at aside at this point, whatever I share with you about end time. I look at the Bible, there's a similar situation that is found in the book of Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Okay? Genesis chapter 6 is very interesting. I believe just now I brought you through Genesis, Genesis chapter 6. Okay? And it talks about God wants to destroy the earth. And as we were reading about Genesis chapter 6, then there's a character that stood out, and it is none other than Noah. Okay? When I was reading Genesis chapter 6, especially I start with, I, 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 I start with chapter 6 verse, uh, verse 9. This is the account of Noah. And then when you come to the part that it says that God wants to destroy the earth because the earth was very wicked. It's like, why? Why do you want to destroy the earth? Is the word earth so wicked to the point that it deserves to be destroyed? I 
as I go from the beginning of the chapter, then I understand there are many things that happen in the unseen. We don't see it. But it is influencing the entire civilizations as well as the world. But it became so rotten and so bad, sometimes it's just void of explanation. We don't know why people are doing this, you know, uh, LGBT things. We don't know why people become so greedy to the point they are at one another's throat. We don't know why those policymakers, they are in position, but they can't see the things that they, they have done is not right. You know, why is such a thing happen? Our nation is supposed to be people, both who are in position as well as the communists. We are supposed to be religious people. We are supposed to be uh, people who are courteous, you know. We believe in there's a God and God will reward those who are good and God will punish those who are evil. But when it comes to day-to-day -day situation, we don't see the value of believing in God. And we just wonder why. Why is it that we do one thing, we say, what, we say, we say one thing, we do another thing, you know? So, as I begin to study chapter 6, verse 1, then I see the seriousness. Now, chapter 6, verse 1, is very interesting. I will just, with the Bible with me, I will just read to you in verse 1 to verse uh, 3. Then the people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them, human beings. Eh? The sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. Verse 3, then only God says, then the Lord says, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120s. In those days, for some times after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth. For whenever the sons of God had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and the famous warriors of ancient time. This is a text by itself. There's such a thing called special species. Where do they come from? The root of it. The Bible talks about this, that the fallen angels that have been cast down, they look at the beautiful women of the human race. So they had sex with them and produced wicked, powerful, but wicked generation. You understand? So from there, the Bible says that in verse 5, the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So that's why God began to swing into action. The earth was beautiful. God created it. It was meant to be given to Adam and Eve they were given the free choice to always obey God, to demonstrate their loyalty and their love towards God, and then they will rule and reign over the Garden of Eden and continue to live a perfect life. They don't need to toil. They don't need to sweat. Everything was provided for. But we know that they walk away from God. They disobey God. And they handed Garden of Eden to the devil, which the devil confessed in the book of Luke. He says that that which is given to me, I can give it to you, Jesus, as long as you worship me. But what did the Lord say? The second Adam says, no, I will only worship the Lord my God. Get thee behind me, Satan. Now to string the entire theology together, Let's move very fast to the New Testament. Then I will come back here. Then we'll go into the lives of Noah. That's where in Christ, Christ is trying to raise a kingdom of priests who is after God's own heart. If we are found in Christ, the Bible says, 
we have to do this one thing constantly, motivate ourselves by saying, together with Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. But in Genesis, you find that the Bible says that the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. It is so wicked, the things that they have done, because the demons are involved in the lives of men. So God says, time's up. My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time. Okay? So that's where God scanned the earth and he found a man called Noah. So Noah was virtually and actually living during so-called his end time with the prospect that the world will be destroyed. So when he heard about it, okay, so he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? God says, go and build an ark. Let's just look at some of the pictures, okay? The Bible says that he is a righteous man between the multitudes of wickedness that's going on and a little church that perhaps hidden away somewhere corner in a housing estate. You think God don't know that there's a group of praying believers? There's a group of Bible-believing believers? He knows. When he look at the entire Georgetown, he knows those are his. When he look at the entire Tanjung Bunga, Tanjung Tokong, Tanjung Uma, you know, and Baturi, he knows those are his. When he look at the entire uh, Aitam Island Glaze Island Park, he knows those are his. The whole world then, the Bible says that, you know, it is filled with wickedness. But he found there's a man called Noah. And he is righteous. Today, you are found in the house of God. You are seated here. God takes notice of your faithfulness. God knows that you are his. Hallelujah. He knows you more than just by your name. The Bible says he knows what's going on in your heart. You may not be perfect, but he knows that you fear him, you want to honor him. There are many who stay away. Why do they stay away? I don't know. But there are many who choose to stay away. I talk to many pastors, you know, because we have got this Zoom meeting, that Zoom meeting. The Bible tells us that he knows. So he knows where you are. He knows you carry that light with you, the light of the gospel, the light of Jesus. And wherever you are, whichever housing estate, whichever part of Penang Island, and even part of it and beyond, he knows. So he spotted this man called Noah. The Bible says that he's a righteous man, so God share. Now, the important thing is realize this. When God handpick you, he will speak to you. But do not believe in everything that you hear. Always check what you heard with the word. And then still not sure, come and check with the pastors. Get what I'm trying to say? Huh? It's important. The Bible says, do not believe in every spirit, but test every spirit. But it is important to learn to hear. God wants to speak to you personally. And so God spoke to him and said, Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth. Look, this is what I would like you to do. I would like you to build a model of illustration. And that is called an ark. So the measurement was given, the material was given, uh, the description was given. And so let's look at the next picture. Noah start building. And of all the place, he built it on where? Dry ground, at the hilltop, at the mountaintop. And so he started to build. And then the people begin to wonder, what is going on? So, he said, because judgment is coming, you know, because judgment is coming, God spoke to me, and therefore he says, Help me, want me to build an ark and, and to let you all know that, you know, someday when the ark is completed, everyone will get a chance to go in. But it's up to you. But the Bible says, he preached to them. Let's just look at the next picture. He actually preached to them, telling them concerning, concerning the impending judgment. It's just like, the church. The church keep preaching to the people, you know, around maybe here, Sungai Pinang, or Hunza, or McAllister Road, or, you know, other churches preaching the declarations about end time, coronavirus, sign of Jesus is coming back. But the thing is, the people just would not believe. 
They laugh, they mock, they live their life as normal. How many of you know that Penang has finally got a church, LGBT church? Are you aware? Officially, there's an LGBT church already in Penang. They already advertise their service. So, all those who believe that, you know, God loves LGBT and allow them to live that lifestyle and still can come to church and they are attending there. And I'd like you to know, it's a deception. God loves sinners, but He hates sins. And those who are involved in LGBT, God loves you. But you have to stop living that kind of a lifestyle with His help, of course. And we as a church will not judge you. We as a church will not make fun of you either. You are welcome to come to the house of God. But we don't condone your lifestyle, but we love you, okay? So they make fun of him. Oh, how they make fun of him. And so finally, when the ark was ready, the scripture tells us that he did according to what God has commanded, bring in all the animals. Next picture. So all the animals, you know, two by two, two by two, two by two, went in. And finally, all done. Noah, together with his family, seven of them went in. And so he continued to, the next picture, he continued to tell them, look, the judgment is coming. God is going to see to it that there will be rain. When he mentioned the rain, they mock at him. It's like when we mention rapture, People mock at us. Crazy. Believe in Jesus. Believe until like that. No. It's not our own idea. Look, if we believe that Jesus died, rose again, that itself is an act of, you know, that God take him up to, have, take him up to heaven. It's a miracle. And God is able to also lift us up. Moreover, the two angels in the book of Acts chapter 1 testify that the same Jesus that being lifted up, he will return. And so he preached to them, he reminded them, they would not listen. Now listen, the ark don't have a lock, neither a set of key to open the door. No. So, the same thing. The church don't monopolize the button that push. Three, two, one. Rapture! Shh. It's all in the hand of God. The Bible says that the ark, finally when Noah went in, the door, God shut it from inside. It is God. Noah cannot open it. There's no way he could open it because God is the one that closed it. There's no way that anyone can open it from outside either. And then, they mock at the word R-A-I-N. Chapter 6 eh, of Genesis, eh, chapter 6 of Genesis, there was no rain mentioned, you know. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. I tell you, I am quite consistent watering plant, but sometimes... I am a little bit looking for excuse lazy. I look at the weather. When I see the weather is a little bit cloudy and it rains a little or not that, I tend to tell myself, no need la, skip today la. But in my heart, I say, poor thing, those plants never ask to be planted in your house. They cannot go to the hose there and turn on the tap and get water. They all depends on you. And now you... Just for that five minutes, you want to share responsibility. Actually, it's just five minutes. What I need to do is just go to the tap, turn it on. Well, I saw the hose at the other end, the water gushing out. I just need to just lift it up. Serious. Lift it up. And then I, I just put near the bamboo plants, you know, in between. I don't even have to touch it. I just tuck it in between and I scroll my handphone for two minutes. After that, I can take the hose for another pot of bamboo. Actually, bamboo uh, needs a lot of water. Shame on you uh, when it turns yellow. Shame on you when all the bamboo leaves drop. Uh, and then pastor's house, bamboo tree, bought up, I tell you. <laughs> what a bad testimony. <laughs> right, uh, anyway, coming back. So I faithfully, I forced myself. I tell myself, 
you are responsible for this bamboo. You must water this bamboo. You must, as another plant as well, you must not check your responsibility. But how did the plant receive, you know, water? In Genesis, oh, before chapter 6, the Bible says that God, you see, God is very good and, and, and diligent and consistent. Every day in the evening, he will send dew to come upon the entire Garden of Eden. That's where the plant receives all the moisture and continues to grow. So no one has ever seen the word called rain. So no one has ever seen the rain. But with the door shut, bang, suddenly, the earth opened, water gushed out, and then start big droplets start falling. First time they saw, ah, oh, what is this? Go, 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 go. What, 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 what? It, it, it's called rain. Unfortunately, it didn't stop at a few drops. Let's look at the next picture. The rain became so heavy, you know, so they started to pound on the door of Noah's, Noah's ark. But the door could not be opened. Perhaps, this is what I think, the whole and the entire ark is soundproof. Noah couldn't even hear anything. Scary, isn't it? Now you're asking for help. But the timing, over. Just the timing, over. When the rapture happened, Many will regret the timing will be over. Next. Next picture. And so the water came up. It flooded the whole place. There's no place for them to, 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 to stay safe. Next. They keep calling out. It's too late. Church is too late. So the Bible says that, you know, the next picture. Many perish, but inside the ark. Next picture. Noah, together with family, safe and sound. In Christ, He is our salvation. We, together with our family, whose names are written in the book of life, is safe and sound in this troubled world. And the day will come when the roll is called up yonder, when rapture happens, or when our name is being called, you know, we know that we are in Christ. It is always safe and sound. The Bible says that the day arrived. The flood was over. Next picture. And God says, Noah, it's time for you to come out. It's time for you to be fruitful and multiply. Next picture. Noah did everything according to what God commanded. And then he built an altar that revealed his heart that he always want to obey God. He acknowledged that God, you are sovereign. You are the one and only. Now, this is not just a story. In Turkey, they have found the ark. Let's just look at the next picture. They have found the remnant of the ark. How did this picture come about? Technology. You know, technology that was during the First World War, Second World War, they invented satellite. Satellite was not invented yesterday, you know. <laughs> satellite was invented during that time. So when it was orbiting, they found this strange picture. They went in further and then they discovered uh, I mean, into the picture. They did send a team of these explorers, okay, uh, on foot to this place, Mount Ararat, which is in Turkey, around Turkey area. They discover the ark. The ark is a testimony. Someday, when I have time, I will go into the detail and preach about the Noah's ark that is being found. But meanwhile, I'm telling you, it's not, something, it's not something that is made up by the church. So Russia, together with the Turkey government then, they conspire and say that we will not make known to the, uh, to, the, to the world. You know, neither will we 
do, will we acknowledge it? But after so many years, there's a team from Hong Kong especially, basically comprises of scientists and all that. They raised enough funds, they went over, they made a document. So it's not just the Westerners or the, those are from the Middle Eastern, you know, that they discovered this art. There are people who on purpose and when the group from Hong Kong especially, I saw the documentary. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I saw the, then it was videotape, la, yeah, very loud, yeah, la, huh? uh, uh, and CD format, la, uh, sold in Baptist bookstore. Okay, it's in Cantonese. Uh, but uh, today, maybe you can check it out in social media, and they have already downloaded it. Huh? Uh, they're able to find fresh bean, fresh wood, and so on and so forth about the structure, which is buried underneath. Because the weather there is very cold, so many of the interior is being preserved. The exterior is exposed to the, of the art is exposed to the element. So they are subject to wear and tear. But underneath, in between and all that, uh, they, they could go in, okay? So the story of Noah's art tell us this one thing. God did destroy the earth, Okay? Judgment came. Point is, then it was destroyed by water. God promised, that's why he put a rainbow. He says that it's a covenant between me and you, Noah, and your descendants, and to the whole world. I will not destroy nor judge the earth by water. However, it's very strange that I think it's in this uh, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. It talks about the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now here it talks about the destructions of the earth. But this time around, it is by fire. Peter is referring to rapture, second coming, and time. Now how is that going to happen? I don't know. But I do know that the stage is being set. Meaning to say that, you know, the possibility that it will happen, it could happen. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 to verse 8. Time's up. You will hear wars and rumors of wars, all this and so on and so forth, kingdom against kingdom, and all this beginning of sorrow, followed by the picture immediately. Yep. We know nowadays people, they don't fight with weapons, but they will at the battle of Armageddon. But meanwhile, there are all kinds of war that's going around, right? uh, especially trade war. I don't need to go into it. But you know about China as well as uh, America. The next picture. The clash between the two titans is so great. And we are like ants being caught between two big elephants, uh, our country. These are the nations that have got nuclear power. Look at the pictures. Next. One look, you know, North Korea, China, Russia, America, and Iran as well. Okay? How does a nuclear bomb look like? Have you ever thought about it? I searched for it, and this is how it looks like. And the next one. They have got special name. I think uh, they have got special code. I spare you and spare myself. Okay? Now, should the nation start fighting, and this time it will not be during your grandpa, my grandpa, grandma, your grandma time, whereby, you know, uh, they landed like the Japanese in north part of Malaya and cycling all the way down, pass by Taiping, Ipoh, and come to uh, Kuala Lumpur and then reach all the way, so fierce, huh? just with bicycle, they're able to reach Johor Bahru, and even later on take over uh, Singapore. Uh, it, won't, it will not be like this. It will be just at the press of a bastion. 
sorry, at a press of a button. And this is what happened. Next. Finish. Cities, nations, peninsula, over. Within a split of a second. That you know, I know. So that's what the scriptures say. Next picture. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt. Peter don't even know that there's such a thing called nuclear weapon. Prophetically, in the scripture, he wrote it in line with the people during Noah's time. They don't even know what rain is all about. They don't even know flood, what flood is all about. But it happens as the word of God prescribed. Church, we have got only one message for the people around us. Their hearts are gripped with fear. Some of them, they feel so hopeless. Some of them, they feel so, so, so despair, you know, with the invasion and with the spread of the COVID-19. Many will lose their job down the road. Many, many will lose their job. Many, you know, uh, will lose hope. They don't have money for their livelihood. They don't have money for their medical bill. Life will be so bleak. What shall we do? Don't wait until then. Jesus is the answer. Next picture. One way. That's right. Jesus is the answer. He is the answer because you know why? The Bible tells us in Christ. I'm going to share with you five scriptures from the book of Romans just very quickly. Go to the five scripture. I'll need. All have sins and come short of the glory of God. Everybody has got sin. Because of that, we are separated from God. We can't hear from God. Number two. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Christ Jesus our Lord. Eternal life comes from God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, number three. But God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us on the cross. Number four. What we need to do is we confess our mouth and believe in our heart. It's not enough to just confess. We must make sure that our hearts believe. Because God has raised him from dead, from the dead, and you will be saved. The last one. Whoever call on in the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the point is, how can they call on the name of the Lord unless we go and share with them? Because how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? This morning, I'm speaking to every one of you as a preacher. You may not be a pastor, but you can preach the little gospel and tell it to your loved ones, tell it to your friends that God said in His Word, the end time is near. I'm going to put this up one way with all the Scripture. This is my assignment for you. You go back and you keep reading these five verses and you share with your friends everything that you need to know. There are many more Scripture verses, many more. But I give you Romans because you can just, from the book of Romans, check out this scripture verse. If you can take your friends going through all this and help your friends to understand that this is the answer. Hallelujah. For end time and coronavirus. In preparation, in preparation for the world, the end of the world to come. You have got everything that you need meanwhile, at least for this coming week. I wouldn't want to preach to you a gospel, and then at the end of the day, you don't even know what to expect. You have got the gospel. You believe in the gospel. Your life has been changed and transformed by the gospel. And now systematically, I take you through just now, you go back and read for yourself, and go back and slowly digest, read over it, and then share it with your friends, share it with your loved ones. Hallelujah. God is raising you up. It says, the last slides. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's read, to, read together. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. One more time. Amen. Shall we stand? Let's read together. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching 
to them. I believe I said something about rapture. In view of the certainty of rapture, as well as second coming, your responsibility, my responsibility, your privilege, my privilege is to tell our generation one way, Jesus is the answer. As the musicians come and play the song still, I want you to just lift up your hand. Amen. Ask God to prepare your heart. Hallelujah. If your heart is not ready, no need to wait. Now, ask God to help you. Get your heart ready. If there are sins, confess it. If there are anger, forsake it. If there are unrighteousness, turn your back towards it and turn your face towards God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I commit your people right now. I plead the blood of Jesus cover every single one of them. I want to thank you and I want to praise you. At the sound of my voice, Lord, you have heard the message. An example that is said by Noah is simply unbelievable. One man able to save the entire world. Hallelujah. Amen. His entire family got saved and then they repopulate the earth. Amen. So it takes just one person. I want to thank you that he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Whatever, Lord, challenges and whatever, Lord, uh, trial and testing we are facing, still, Lord, we are more than a conqueror because you live in us. Father, we thank you, we praise you, hallelujah. And right now, we want to not just commit ourselves, but we lift our loved ones. Would you please pray for your loved ones as well as their friends and colleagues? Lift up your hand. Father, I commit, Lord, all their loved ones, the father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, those who do not know you yet, and they're wondering, why is it all this coronavirus problem around us? Lord, thank you for the opportunity you have given to us to preach the gospel. Lord, may your word burn in the hearts of your every preacher here. May your word burn, Lord, in the heart of every believer here, that they will go forth to just preach the word, preach the word, declare the word, hallelujah. And your Holy Spirit will act upon those words, Lord, uh, and will bring it to pass that many will repent. Amen. And many, Lord, will be ready for the rapture and the second coming. Thank you, Father. I commit your colleague to you as well. Oh, what an opportunity that we can share. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus cover everyone here. Hallelujah. And now let's worship together the chorus. Amen. Only the chorus. When the oceans rise and timeless roar, I will serve you. John chapter 4 verse 4 Let's declare together 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 Hallelujah Greater is he that is in you Than he that is in the world One more time Greater is he that is in you Than he that is in the world One more time Greater is he that is in you Than he that is in the world Now let's personalize it Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Greater is he that is in me Than he that is in the world Shout a big Amen Amen. One Amen. more time. Amen. One more time. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a victorious week. Amen. Woo. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>